Welcome to the Hubbers Live Show, where you can get ideas to grow your eco-conscious business. Uh, for those of you tuning in, uh, please say hi, post your questions in the comments. And the show's only 10 minutes. If we've got time to answer them live, we will. Otherwise, both Lynn and I will respond to them after the show. So today I'm joined by Lynn Stainthorpe of Big Idea Brand Marketing. Hi, Lynn. Welcome. Hi. Hi, Karen. <laughs> Great to have you on the show. Um, Lynn works with small business owners with big ideas. So she helps to revitalize your purpose-driven brand. Um, so you'll feel proud of your brand identity. Um, and messaging, connect more deeply with your target audience, um, elevate your business and increase your visibility and bring your change to the world. So Lynn, I know you work with a lot of, um, we, we've worked on a lot of projects together and we yeah. work with a lot of um, ethical and conscious business owners. Yeah. Um, so really great to have you on the show to talk a bit about building your brand during COVID. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. Well, this is what I've prepared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so one of what I want to ask you was, is this something that we should all be doing to evolve our brands during COVID? I think the most important thing is listening to our customers and asking them questions with lots of empathy because COVID's been a difficult time for some people. Um, a really difficult time for others and, and others again have found that their business has motored on during it so depending on what your business is what your products and services are the most important thing is really to listen to customers and um, keep your antennae on for what's going on in your market and in the world in general because behaviors have been changing things have been shifting and some of these things are going to revert but others are here for good so one of the examples that i think everyone feels is here for good now is the shift to online so mm. online purchasing yeah. whether it's products or services so um i was reading about john lewis who of course are quite an ethical business based on their partnership principles um, and what's happened to them, because they have physical stores and an online service, you know, the omni-channel. And this is meant to be the way to go forward. So before COVID, their business is 40% online. And now their target is to shift 60% of their business to online. Wow. And they've closed a couple of stores as well. So listen to your customers but also look at these trends and then ask yourself what can i do with my products and my services that means i can take advantage of what my customers say they want what they need and what's going on in general okay some really really good advice there yeah i mean what what, so what are what do you find of the sort of big brand debates have been over the last six months Oh, the, the most interesting one for me has been this debate between about um, investing in your brand strategy versus investing in brand activation. Okay. In, in old fashioned terms, it's kind of <laughs> working out what, is, what your strategy is going to be versus what you promote day to day. And of course, it's not one or the other, is it? It can't okay. possibly be. It's all about balancing having your vision for the future staying true to your purpose and your values but also um investing in what you need today and the next day and having your 90-day plans and your i suppose most people work with 90-day plans don't they so have your annual plan have your 90-day plan but have your vision as well so everything you do stays true to your vision yeah and your activation is a step towards it. So it's not one or the other, it's balancing investment in the future with investment in the day-to-day. -day. Okay, and I suppose some, for some people that vision is probably changing a bit as well, isn't it? Because yeah. they're looking, you know, yeah. things have changed from COVID, people are having to work in a completely different way. Um, and I think as well, one of the things that I've sort of seen out there, I know you post a lot of on LinkedIn and, um, you know, you have some great posts going on there. 
um, okay. really good information. Well, you were one of um, LinkedIn's <laughs> voices for 2019. So, yeah, you've got a great following there and some really good stuff. So do check out Lynn, that, that big idea, Lynn or Lynn Stainthorpe on LinkedIn. Um, yeah, one of the things that um, I think has been happening is there's been more and more coming out now as well that people are looking to work with more ethical brands yeah. and more sustainable brands as well yeah. that's becoming yeah. more and more important for people and public absolutely isn't it? yeah absolutely yeah. and you've got the um you've got the the increasing numbers of people who are actually looking they're actually looking for to buy from brands with shared values mm -hmm. and brands that can articulate what they're all about so why they exist and i think people are looking for what's the change for good this brand's going to make in the world so they're starting to ask more questions and isn't it interesting the news today about the government saying that they're going to ask businesses to verify their sources of products like palm oil cocoa coffee right okay i mean the big debate is campaigners are saying this is great the big debate is what are the penalties Mm. You know, what what are the parameters what are the penalties but i think that's an example of consumers are worried about where their stuff comes from absolutely and i think that's why you know the big kind of buying local movement is gathering force yeah. as well um yeah. you know not meaning that you can't buy anything from abroad and you shouldn't be supporting sort of your yeah. global partners around the world but yeah. you know that if you're going and buying veg from someone you know you can go and see where it's growing from and get to know the person you're actually buying from so yeah. I think that's really important actually yeah. local shopping has been one of the one of the other trends in there's right. online and there's buying local isn't there yeah local. and with a lot of the local delivery services and that as well yeah yeah, yeah. fantastic yeah. Yeah. and and how can so how can you how can we tell if our branding needs an update um, good question. Um, the obvious, the, there are the really obvious ones we start with. So just a bit look and feel dated. So that's one question because things move on. And the secret of the, the long lived brands is they always evolve. So does it look and feel dated is in not just in terms of the logo, but in terms of how the brand speaks and how it acts and what the offers are. Do you need new products? Do you need to add new services? Um, good question that I like is I remember someone said to me once, they said, I just want to feel proud of my brand. <laughs> so that's a good question. Do you feel proud of your brand? And um, you'll know this, Karen, when people say, don't look at my website. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the real that's the real symptom. Or they don't want to hand out a business card or they yeah. write on a business card. That's the, they're all signs that something needs to change. Something needs to shift. And it doesn't have to be, you know, it can be anything. It could be a reinvention, but it doesn't have to be. It can be a refresh. It could be that you don't need to change your logo, but you need to change the way you, you the sort of images you use, the way you talk, what the services are. Yeah. Um, and it could and, just be a little sort of mod modernising the logo or evolution, you know, give yeah. it a bit of an evolution, a bit yeah. of colour change. Yeah. It, yeah. 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 Make it look a bit, bit more off today or yeah. of the future. Um, some signs are... Um, launching new services which or products which then appeal to a new type of customer which mean that um, either do you want to keep the existing customers on board or are you letting them go so do you need to represent the brand as well so they're all clues but at the end of the day you want a brand you feel proud of that's not stopping you getting your message out out to the world the what one that you feel proud of so it's helping you get your message out in the world yeah so that's definitely and i can attest to that sort of since i've done it yeah i just got yeah. to the point where i was not wanting to share my website i was not yeah. i was feeling confused about my messaging i was getting across when i'd going networking or, or trying to market as well because you didn't i didn't have that kind of niche yeah. and think to make it the marketing easier and know who i was trying to target so that was yeah. 
That's been so helpful. So anyway, we are coming to the end of the show. I know you've got a couple of offers which we've shared in the post. So for those of you not ready to rebrand, you've got two offers. Um, One is to fine tune your brand color palette. Yeah. And the other one is to have a brand audit. And I know these are really popular and huge amount of value. So definitely, if any of you are interested, we have got... um, we have got the links in the yeah. post. Yeah. Um, you can find Lynn at Big Idea Lynn, and that's across Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Yeah, although I'm not that active on Twitter and Instagram at the moment, but definitely Facebook. I mean, yeah. I will get the messages, but yeah, yeah, more like Facebook and LinkedIn. Okay, and we've had lots of comments. So we've <laughs> got um, yeah, Nikki, Christelle, Gail, yeah. and yeah, it's really getting busy there. I'm so sorry, guys, we haven't. Because it's so quick and short, you don't get time to to answer all these questions live. But um, both me and Lynn will jump on the post straight after, get to all your questions and answer them. And if you're watching later as well, do keep answering questions there and we'll keep checking back later. So, awesome. yeah, thank you so much, Lynn, for joining thank me. Thank you. Thank you really, for the opportunity. Really, yeah, I know it's really snappy, really quick, but really good to have you on the show and share your insights. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, 